Tricks, where beginners learn to tie flies. I'm Courtney from Trout Country Fishing Guides. And I'm Mike Gorlowski. I'm a fishing guide. Mikey, what are we drinking today? Well, we're drinking Mariner. And Always drinking Mariner. It's a golden IPA. You know, we gotta go down there. We should talk, we should do one of these episodes at the brewery in Coquitlam. How cool would that be? Then we could just have like It'd beer be, flowing. Yeah, it'd be great for us. Time. I don't know how effective it would be to actually <laughs> making the fly, but yeah, sure. Golden an IPA. Cheers to you, sir. I wouldn't argue to that. Mm. Mm. IPA is my favorite beer, but this one is very, very nice. You, it feels like you could drink it all day. You could drink it all. All day. Challenge accepted. <laughs> mm. um, what are we tying today? Well, we're going to tie a general practitioner variation. I mean, nobody really ties these identical all the time. but <gasps> It looks like a prawn. We're tying a prawn. Yeah, it's a shrimpy looking thing. Works pretty good for salmon and steelhead. I know this sounds kind of silly, but that I feel like the prawn is my, you know... It's my, it's my it's my future. Use. Like I have to tie one of these. I'm really excited. And I'm going on a fishing trip on the north coast, so I'm gonna need a few of these. So you're gonna make me one. Okay, cool. We're gonna I'll make you a real pretty one. This is uh, I believe a size one Alec Jackson style hook. Dude, this can... thing is a gangster hook. And I'm afraid right now because it's not going into my vise, and I'm going to hook myself. So how is this gonna work? We're gonna. It's to oh, the go. max. Go. There's a little groove there that the hook should sit in. Oh, not quite. There we go. So I like to use as thin thread as I can get away with. Okay. Um, why is that? Tell me why. I always want to know why, Mikey. Why? There is kind of room for error if you're okay. If you don't snap the thread too often. Okay, so don't be so strong-willed like myself. Yeah, I'd rather put more wraps than, and just gotcha. more wraps with thinner thread than fewer wraps with thick thread. That's okay. just how I've always tied flies. It seems to work okay, except for here. Okay, so I'm gonna tie, wrap the hook all the way. How far back are we going? Yeah, we're gonna wrap pretty much the whole shank of the hook until we see where it starts bending. Ooh, this is a lot of work. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done this much wrapping. So you wouldn't be a very good commercial tire. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Oh wow, you're going all the way. And he's going all the way. Okay, I gotta figure out how to do it as fast as you. That's how you do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. You just go faster. Faster. I got too much I've got too much thread out there. It's not looking good. Give it a six out of ten. Well, you haven't got very far in the fly, so hopefully you're not giving yourself that little credit yet. <laughs> no, my my wrapping skills. Okay. So yeah. we're gonna take a little French tinsel here and just, I mean, tie a little butt on the fly. Woo! So I'll wrap the thread back to almost. Bar, pretty much where the barb is, and make sure. Where's the French tinsel? Right oh, just right in front of you there, Courtney. Just a little bit of it. I have to it's open not your eyes, Miss Brown. It's not cheap, so. <laughs> okay, so don't overuse. So yeah, and so because I'm using thin on? thread, I can get away with doing a couple extra wraps underneath it. I keep it fairly even. Try not to clump the thread as you wrap it. Okay. Because you'll see that as soon as you start wrapping this. Gotcha. And this is pretty thick, so I'm only gonna do four or five wraps. Okay, only four or five wraps. And then tie it off, tie it off, cut it, and cut a little bit, little tag. Cinch that down. Okay, so wrapping back to front, basically over its little tail. How do you how do you explain that? That did that did not come out right. Yeah, it's just a 
I don't really tie a lot of flash in the fly. This is about as much flash as you're going to see in it. Okay. You could probably put a little in the tail after. It's not a flashy fly, ladies and gentlemen. Not a flashy right? fly. You don't need flashy fly. Not always. All right. Yeah. Cut that up. Yeah, actually, you tied maybe a few too many wraps on there. Yeah. So, Back it up. Back, Back it up. up. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And hold hold the rest of it with your fingers so it doesn't totally unwrap. You know, just right here. You hold it like that yeah. and unwrap it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Keep unwrapping. Uh, keep unwrapping. Yeah, keep unwrapping. I feel like if I unwrap them, I'm not going to have any more wraps on there. Yeah. Okay, you... so it's unwrapped now. Now back up a couple. There you go. Hold that. that. Where are you going? Yeah, that's about as many wraps as you need. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Wrapping over. We'll do it twice there. Oops, oh, sorry. I messed no. it up. Oh, you're, you're still good. Remember, use your, not a lot of thread. You don't need too too much stuff on there. If you do too many wraps and tie too much material on, you're left with nothing at the end. We learned that last time. We sure did. Okay, it's in there. Yeah. So now we're gonna start. We're gonna make a dubbing loop, and it's gonna be a pretty good size one. Gonna, you want to be oh. able to wrap the whole. Oh yeah. Uh, Where's my little crook shank? Yeah, you know, let's I'll trade you. What is the name for that? I just call this the hook. The hook. It's just a dubbing loop hook. So you want a fairly long one, you said? Yeah, because you're gonna wrap the whole hook with it, and it would be kind of horrible to run out. So that's probably like eight inches of. Are you triple wrapping that? Yeah, you could do double or triple. It's eight out threads, so, so it's thin. It's really thin. It's super thin. Okay. Okay, so wrap, wrap, wrap. And we are actually going to use seal fur or seal fur substitute. Yes, substitute. Yes, substitute. Totally. No little baby seals were harmed in the making of this fly. Just larger ones. <laughs> Yikes, you're supposed to lie to me and tell me it's... Fake? It's fake. It's totally fake. Synthetic. synthetic. Sure, it's synthetic. Just like my seal skin boots. <laughs> we digress. We digress. <laughs> this looks like clown hair. Yeah, that's what it is. It's clown hair. <laughs> and I mean, you could mix it's like in. Like someone a, scalped Ronald McDonald. <laughs> you could mix in a little flash with this if you had some crystal flash. Oh, I like I like that idea. Give it a little more pop under the water. Do what you want. Make it your GP. That's the coolest thing about, you know, flies is that. You, we give you the skills, you know, you get the skills, you learn how to do the basic stuff, but then you can just be almost as creative as you ever wanted. Yeah, if you know the techniques, then you could use... Do you get super crazy? Like, have you invented a fly before? You know, it's hard to say if you've ever invented a fly sure, because... Sure, but, like, you know, you get it wrong. There are some ideas like, that I've only no. seen on my own flies, but I mean, I'm sure someone out there has done it before. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. so. I seem to have twisted myself up a little bit here. There we That's go. All right. Yeah, you're doing good. I you used a lot less material because last time it was a full on toupee. Remember? That sculpin? She was a beaut. It was a, a fat sculpin. Skinny up in the water a little bit. If you use a little less material, you can get the thread a little tighter and it just stays on there better. Okay. I'm messing around with mine too much, so I'm just gonna... No, that's good. Just twist that. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. That will end up being absolutely perfect. I feel so, so happy. It's perfect. Okay, and so, then remove the material excess. Put it back 
back in there because it's expensive. Yeah, it's a good way to save. So I'm going to do just two or three wraps and then we can tie it off. Okay. But I'm not going to cut it. Okay, I'm just going to like let it hang. Yeah. There we go. And this is where... Ah, oh, again! Too much pressure, not enough pressure. Too much pressure, not Keep enough snug. pressure. Oh yeah, that's... Okay, so with this hook, you see how there's another hook right there. So you put it on that and you just wrap with it. Hold in there. Ladies and gentlemen. Just one or two wraps, or two or three, maybe Thank tops. You. Just a little bit. Mikey, showing me all the good stuff. So. <laughs> okay, I wrapped it way more than I need to. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and now I'm gonna let it hang back here. Very delicately. So here we're using a fur of type. So this is, this is polar bear hair. Okay. Not legal in some places, so you can use cattail. Cattail is the other really good one to use. Okay. Um, I like polar bear because I have a lot of it and it's very durable and it looks really good in the water. All right. So. Durability is key with flies, you know? You want to be able to catch multiple I, fish, multiple adventures, multiple years using these flies. Steelhead flies and salmon flies, you don't have to be very specific with the tiny details. I find it's just better if you make a fly that lasts a long time. There you go. Perfect. It really is are all about the durability. So, cut a little bit of material, not, okay. not a Just ridiculous amount. You. Keep it sparse because if you have too much material on a fly, it unless it's weighted, it takes longer for the fly to sink. Okay. So and then it doesn't fish right. Doesn't it's fish not where right. You need it to yeah, be. you don't need to go overboard on materials. So. So particular. And I'm gonna do about a body length. Tie it right behind this little clump. And I'm gonna tie that right down along the whole body because I don't want this material to come up as I'm fishing it. I've had these flies last me a very long time. In a lot of cases, the only thing left is this polar, polar bear. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so I don't I want to. Let's see. Okay, I think I got it in the right place. Love this orange man, it's real really nice and bright. Looking juicy, looking prawny. It looks pretty juicy and to be honest with you, I mean it looks like a shrimp, but also looks like eggs. Looks like a few different things that are delicious in the water. Sure. You can't go wrong. I like that. Oh, I've got one little section of fur that just will not get down in there. So let's stop for a second. So you back actually, it up, back you it actually up. used probably about twice, two times uh, as much material as you really needed. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm just. See, gonna as you tie it down, it's then. very large there. Maybe. I know that's what I was noticing. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do it the right way this time because I learned when I was doing the sculpt in that you can back it up, and, rewind. And we're actually gonna try and save some of that, so later I'll tie another GP and not waste any of the polar bear. Love that. Love your style. Let's see, there's only so much of it left. Okay, so Courtney's backed right out of that fly, and I'm going to break this in half and hand just over here. Perfect. And then you can actually pull a little of the under, under fur out, under too. Fur, there okay. you go. I was trying to do that, but... Not too much, because you'll lose... The actual... The, the nice tapered shape of it. Gotcha, yeah. okay. Whew, a lot to think about. Mikey, tell me about how much you love this beer that we're drinking. Well, about halfway done. and You must uh, like it. I do. Yeah. I'm a big fan. <laughs> All right, I've got this tied in. There you go. And it's looking a lot better. As you tie your material in, mm -hmm. just remember the shape that you have when you tie it in will kind of correspond to the shape of the fly afterwards. Like if you have okay. a bunch of big bumps here, then when you wrap your material on top of it. It's gonna be bumpy. It's gonna be bumpy. So just try and keep it nice and. Okay, so I should probably use more thread to get everything nice and uniform. Yeah, just keep it nice and uniform okay. and try and 
keep with the shape of the fly. It's funny because I'm trying to wrap the least amount of time so that it's, it doesn't, uh, you know, get too heavy, but then you need a certain amount and in order to make it look really that's nice. That's why I use eight on. Really light fly, okay. Yeah. Or uh, really light thread. Yeah. I'm learning. This is great. I feel like I could tie quite a few of these. Maybe I can help you out. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a few of these. These are uh, pretty darn good flies. I'm gonna do one or two more wraps of this material. Over. Okay. Just one or two more. So hold up. That's good, yeah. From this point. Yeah. Do one or, one two, or two more wraps. On top. Yeah, you got her. Oh, I'm gonna do it the right yeah, way there you this go. time. Check that out. And if you raise the vise a little bit, you'll give yourself a little bit extra room. That's okay. But I appreciate the tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. Okay, so I wrapped it four times. Did yeah, I got two times. Back it right up. We're gonna take some golden pheasant dyed Ooh, hot. This is beautiful. I believe that's hot orange or Ooh, hot red. Yeah. You can even just take just natural. A fiery one. And uh, well, that's way too long. So we're gonna try start off with a short feather at first. Oops. Are mine okay? You're gonna, you can come yeah. down. Yeah, we're gonna use that one. Right. This one you can use later on the fly. So. Okay. So, perfect. So get a rather short one for the beginning. So a lot of classic GB flies you'd use General golden. General practitioner. Who came up with that name, man? Not so great. Doctor. <laughs> so rip off all of the down. The down. I'm, a lot of people would normally add golden pheasant with the black tips tied in. To represent prawn eyes. I Ooh, mean, I like that. You could do that. Uh, you would add it right here. Okay. If you were to do that, but I'm not. All right. Just gonna, just gonna keep it simple. Just gonna keep it simple. For me right now. Yep. We're gonna tie. So I'm just putting it right on the top. From the very top, this is gonna represent the shell back. Okay. And like I said, you can just do a couple wraps and then tie it tight and then okay. readjust it when it's. Perfect. Got a few wraps yeah, of thread on. Yeah, I definitely want this one to sit right on top yeah it's gonna make the fly in the end so don't be afraid to leave a little extra stem rip all the material off the fly or off the feather that you do not need so you just tie on stem okay and how far have you wrapped up just, just the same a little length up the tail okay halfway would be ideal this is the look we're really trying to achieve this is Gorgeous, gorgeous fly. Okay, check that out. Beauty, there you go. Something pretty good. Yeah. Now I think we're all gonna... my flies are female, by the way. Just she? so you know. It's always a she. So we have saddle hackle right now. Mm. I don't like schlapping in this instance. Love the golden eye today. Sorry, oh. I just can't stop talking about it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the beer as well. There's just something about IPA, you know, the hoppiness. It's got the flavor. It's got the flavor. Like really, you know, if you like hops, then you'll love it. But um, okay, so ooh, what's going on here? So we what have, is this? This is a saddle hackle. A saddle hackle. And it is uh, dyed hot orange, I believe. Oh, it's looking pretty orangey. Steelhead orange. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you know you're gonna get them with this. Exactly. And we're gonna tie it in. Tip the feather first. Okay, just tie. I'm gonna watch you because we're gonna take the tip of it and pull the material back so you can access the stem. There's just that much left. Okay. And cut it like. So just cutting the very tip right off. Like that, and that's the part I'm gonna tie in. Nice. Woo! And then we're gonna actually put some okay. wire here. Do that. There's a few different ways to do this, but I like using wire and counter ribbing it so it lasts a long time some people counter ribbing like, now that's something i haven't heard before yeah it basically means wrapping the wire in the opposite direction of the saddle okay so it cinches it down every other wrap so there's a piece of wire for perfect. you perfect and Whoa. stainless steel wire is crazy over definitely here. the best wire you can use it's the least likely to break on you but it's also the most expensive now, does it matter if this kind of twists and turns, or should I really try to keep it, you know, straight? What do you think? You want it to sit like that with the. Okay, so you want us to sit 
perfectly in line with the You're going to end up wrapping it, and if you oh, okay. tie it upside down, you notice there's a there's a natural direction the feather wants to sit. Cool, so you want it to sit, like, curving. This is the oh, inside okay. of the feather, the underside, and this okay. is the top side. Okay, perfect. Top side up. Top side up. And then some wire, and we're going to tie the wire in. I like to tie in the wire basically along most of the length of the body. Again, to keep it kind of uniform and to keep the wire from ever coming out. Okay. So, wrap, keep your body nice and uniform. Don't add too much thread in one spot. Just good coverage. Oh, did you already pull a piece? Oh, you are yeah. such a gentleman. Thank you. Fish with Mikey on the river because he always puts you in the right spots, right? Yeah, I'll let you fish first while I drink this beer. <laughs> exactly. Such a gentleman. Okay. Um, can you show me exactly what you did again? Or no, that's right. Just tie that just in. Tie that in. Okay, just so like laying that. it on top. And all the way back to your original pheasant feather. All the way back. And I'm actually going to leave the thread halfway down the shank. Okay. Or what you could do, pro tip. Okay. is do a couple wraps up forward okay. now the threads more out of the way as you start wrapping this seal type body I'm not gonna wrap too close to the previous wrap but okay. I'm not gonna keep it too far gotcha. just a nice sparse kind of wrap holy moly okay so so all right halfway down the fly now I'm actually gonna take. Do you see what's happening here? The wrapping? No, like maybe I didn't wrap all this back far enough. Oh yeah, just take your thread and wrap just it. Just wrap back far. Okay. Actually, hold up a sec. So, pro tip: this is why I wrap four. And now I'm gonna unwrap it a few times till it hits the thread, and then I'm gonna rewrap it again. Gotcha. So that whole time the thread was out of the way. Tied it down. And we're gonna hang it back out here. Whoo! Okay. So we. See what's going on here. Oh. oh. Yeah, you just didn't tie just it didn't in tie far. It. Yeah. Far enough, that's all. Okay. I'm going. I'm going for it. Okay, how's that? Is that good? Bueno. Now wrap now, like I showed you. Wrap that thread all the way to the front. Right. Boom. Just to get it out of the way. Now wrap. I actually want to twist this a little bit more. You can see the twists I'm doing. Okay. Keep twisting. Keep twisting. I'm so glad you're here because this is kind of stressful. Okay. Keep twisting. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. A lot more. She could go all the way. Keep going all the way. Keep going? That's probably good there. All right, okay, you're the pro. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap it three times, you said? You're gonna wrap it halfway up the body. Okay, so just get going. And when you get it halfway up the body, remember if you I, if you wrap too close to the previous wrap, the body will be fat. If you give yourself a little extra room, you see how I just pulled it out there a little bit? Yeah. I brought it up the shank a little bit, so you okay. might actually want to unwrap once. Um, this? This, yep. Okay. And then unwrap your thread until you meet your... Okay. Yeah, and you could... So just back it all up. The shorter <laughs> oh, it is, the better. Shoot. Yeah, as soon as you let go of that, it starts to wrap. I'm definitely going to... Okay, well, you know what? It's going to have to because it has no place to hide. Okay, so I'll back up a couple of these. Until you hit the, there you go. Got it. And, and then now, wrap, now and then re cinch it down. Yeah. Perfect. And with these little hooks, I basically like to just put them anywhere. Ah, oh my God. I didn't even think of that. Thank you. So we're going to take another golden pheasant feather. That's a little bit longer than the first one we used. Okay. And we're going to try and get it fairly close to it, not over top. Just so it almost lines up. Okay. Almost lines up. Now mine's bigger, so. 
So yeah, that one you're gonna probably end up using at the very end. So leave that feather, grab another one. Oh, okay. That's like a happy medium. A happy little medium. Happy little medium. And you're wrapping this in at the very front. in the middle, okay, in, in the, the middle, middle, middle where your thread is. So there's a bit of overlap, but not too too much. And it keeps the taper nice and consistent on the fly. I like that. Oh, this is just so beautiful. I'm so excited to fish this. I'm not giving you this fly, by the way. It's a mine, all mine. And in fact, I might steal yours. Just saying. <laughs> I'll be watching it. <laughs> like a hawk. So I'm gonna finish after I tie this feather in. And I know it's in there tight. And you could even use Zappa Gap if you wanted to, but it depends how much effort you wanna put into it. Lots of wraps with the ADOP thread works pretty good. I'm gonna continue wrapping this dummy. Woo! And I'm gonna continue wrapping it in a tapered fashion. So I wanna keep a nice consistent body shape. You don't, you're better off having a little bit too little than too much. And again, I just unwrap the thread a little bit until I hit that dubbing loop and then rewrap it. Look at you go. Okay. So, the thread, you want it to be right at the head of the fly. Okay. This little guy just keeps on winding. All the way to the head of the fly. The head of the fly being right here. I just figured it would kind of like hook onto that doubled back metal and break off. I guess not. Don't ever make assumptions. Never make assumptions. Except that you can assume that most IPAs taste delicious. <laughs> True story. I'm gonna... It kind of is the truth though. Just take saying. this uh, saddle Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I Once haven't wrapped it? my, uh, I haven't finished my dubbing. Yeah, pick up your beer. <laughs> so I'm wrapping forward all the way. Mm -hmm. And just try and keep your wraps You're nice right. and consistent. I saw, I yeah, saw yeah, that. I saw that. All the way forward. And then. And leave yourself a little room at the head. Okay, so that's probably good then. That's good. All right, and then I'm gonna cinch it up. So, geez, this bobbin is like this bobbin super particular one loose. has a little dial on the side. Oh, that's really cool. I believe it's called a spider bobbin, and it's actually got so does that tighten it up? A little drag system on it. That's super great. I'm so really glad know. I know about that. Now, now. you know. These are the things. No These are the things that make your life so much easier. Oh my. Cinch this up, wrap, 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 and then cut it off. Cut right? it off. And then we're gonna take this saddle hackle and rip all the down material off it. Okay. So it's just stem, just like that. We love the stems, ladies. And then we're gonna wrap it nice and, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> nice and evenly spaced. Okay. And each feather is Gonna be different lengths, so you're I'm, just gonna have I'm to. I'm wrapping it back and over you're that. Gonna oh, wrap it to the head. Gotcha. And as you wrap, you try and keep the material pointed back. Yep. Try and keep the wraps, like I said, evenly spaced if you can help it. Yep. Again, the fish don't really care, but if you're trying to make it look pretty, then. I kind of feel like you know. I always know that we say they don't care because you know, just get it out there, but. Because it They're depends very what you're particular fishing for. sometimes. Not necessarily as particular as the fisherman. So. True that. Okay. Um. Hold on. I think that I might be. You gotta check this out. No, what, am I, what am I doing? That's good. I'm all right. You might have a few too. You have to make sure you end up at the very end of the fly. So if you find. I have to keep going like fast. Yeah. Like more. Just keep them. Uh, no, no. You actually. You're That's gonna right. make it. Yeah. Woo! There you go. I didn't, it was not looking good there for a second. Look at the volume there. Okay, and then I'm gonna tie this in. At, <laughs> Sorry, I just got so much volume. At the front of the fly, I'll do an extra wrap or two. You mean like 50, because that's that's your speed, right? Whoa! 
I gotta like lighten this uh, wheel the up a little bit. Yeah, the dress. Perfect. I'm feeling good about this one. I think this might be my lucky fly. She's a beaut. Okay, so now what I do is have this get some twine hanging out here. So the wire, you're actually going to wrap it forward as well, but you're going to wrap it in the opposite direction as your saddle hackle. So I'm gonna let you I wrap it this way. Hat. Oh, okay, so however way we wrapped the saddle hackle, we're going to wrap the opposite way. Okay. Exactly. So. All the way up to the front of the hook. All the way hook. up to the front of the hook. And that way, every other wrap oh, is covered in a wire. Doing. Okay, so we're. And as you wrap, if you just do one of these, just kind of work move it. So, move it. it sideways, back gotcha. and forth like this. And it will usually it fall will into place. Down the feathers. And that way. And how, um, how close, like how many. Base, Am I wrapping a lot or a little? You're basically kinda... trying to space it the same way as you spaced the saddle hackle. And that way it kind of is fairly consistent as to the crossover points. And I like, like I said, I like to do this in case the saddle ever breaks. You know, if a fish starts chewing it up, but it mm -hmm. tends to stay looking the same longer. Mm -hmm. And it adds a little weight. So I definitely just... have that problem, you know too many fish yeah just just <laughs> the fly doesn't last long enough you keep going through them exactly oh, i wish okay sometimes if you don't feel like tying too many flies just tie a smaller amount of very durable flies avoid the trees and uh, and the rocks make it work for you don't give them to beginners don't give them to beginners <laughs> Someone that's never cast a fly rod before should not be given one of these. Oh, perfect. Okay. I don't know about you, Mikey, but this is looking pretty good. Now, that feather that you had at the very end, that should Got it. possibly cover the whole hook. Now you can put that in there. Beautiful. And if you don't lay it in flat, and the feather doesn't sit flat. It might be too flat. Is that a thing? Mm, no. Whoa. But if you spin squirrely, pull the material off it, you want to make it even on both sides. Okay, sure. Perfectionist. Oh, look at this little prawn. And I sometimes add another feather on here because you know when you're really like when you're really crushing the fish sometimes these feathers come out a little bit so sometimes I have a second. Alright I like that. We're all we're going for durability with this fly so durability. I'm gonna leave mine with one. Yep. Because you are a lot faster than me. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then you finish off the head on the fly. If it's to your satisfaction, flip finish. Made what? it a little lighter there too. That. This is the wonder of a lighter. Love it. Oh, it smells so good. It smells really it smells good, so doesn't good. it? <laughs> kind of like lighting your hair on fire. A lot like that, yeah. Don't do that. It's a recommendation of mine. Oh my gosh. I leaned over a candle once. It didn't work out very well. French fried a miniature pizza. French fried, for sure. Okay. I just nailed that whip finish. You didn't even see it. I will when I review the camera after. <laughs> replay, instant replay. Okay. And then zap again. It's my favorite fish. stuff. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm definitely going to catch a big steelhead with this one. I can just feel it. Ooh, the hook on that thing. Whew. 
That's it. Thank you so much, everybody. A GP styled fly. Let's see who wore it better. Oh, yours is so nice. See, mine's got a little bit of a, a like a, a little bit of a downplay there. Once it goes in the water, it all kind of all works out. Works out. Man. I don't know. She's a beaut. She's a beaut. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Poor me. Please, <laughs> please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, show some love. Uh, and thank you from Mariner Brewing for the wonderful beer, as always. And uh, we will see you guys next time. So tune in. Bye. Cheers. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Actually, it looks pretty good for your first. squirrely. Oh, I just zappagapped all over my finger. Actually, so you actually did that good because you wrapped really fucking close, but then you wrapped metal really close. See, that's the distance that I used for my saddle. Mm hmm. Yeah, fuck, it's good. It looks good. It's good. Yeah. Get that shit in the water. Fucking get that shit wet and hang on. Yeah! <laughs>